There is no event on the planet like it. The World Series of Poker main event. You know who wins the main event, whether you like poker or not, and that's why it's the one event that you still want to win more than any other. Winning a race that's everyone's dream, winning the main event is, you know, ridiculous. <laughs> Come on. A poker melting pot of pros. Amateurs. Are you kidding me? Come on. Is that good? I gave you a chance to bet your, 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 uh, could you have a flash? And everyone in between. First cows to ever win the main event. Many have come and gone, but the poker star power still shines brightly. This endurance test of Texas Hold'em is set to kick into high gear. Ready for the run to glory and the gold bracelet. to the 2011 World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. The main event is here. They say anyone can win and everyone is ready to dream. Game time, baby. Game time. It may be day three, but there are plenty of big names and personalities still left. I'm still in, and there's about 5,000 people can't say that. Jason Alexander of Seinfeld fame is still in, and so is the poker Brad Phil Helmuth. Hi, everyone. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. And like in years past, the main event brings out the masses. There's a look at the day one, two, and now current chip leader, 26-year-old Ben Lamb. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. What a World Series Ben Lamb is having. On his heels, 31-year-old pro Kevin Saul. A very unpredictable and tough player. He won a WPT title in 2007. We'll get a good look at Lamb tonight. He sits at one of our two feature tables. He's been the story all World Series long. In sixth place, Guillaume Darcourt is a talented Frenchman with some attitude. Let's check in right now with Kara Scott, who caught off the four-time bracelet winner, Daniel Negreanu, before play began. Daniel, heading into day three, what's the most important thing to remember for the player? out there. Well, not to panic. You know, this structure is bigger and better than any other structure in the world. You've got plenty of time. Uh, you can be really patient and you don't have to, like, lose your cool. But it, when people start to slide, all of a sudden, you know, stress comes into play. And this is the biggest event in the world, so it's pretty stressful on the biggest stage ever. Well, play's about to get underway. Good luck out there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Daniel at our feature table tonight with 114,100 chips. He has a slightly above average stack. The table led by Tom Coral. World Series of Poker, Atlantic City Circuit Champ, Henry Tran, always someone to look out for. We started with 6,865 entrants, third largest main event field ever. Winner will get $8.7 million. The blinds right now at 8 and 1,600 on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Hole Cam. Christopher Skiles folds 6-5 off. That is Andrew Rose with pocket deuces. Rose calls for 1600 The main event used to be called the big one. Now it's unbelievably big, and no one calls it the big one anymore. Just under 1,900 players beginning here on day three. Okay. Dale Robinson looks down at ace four suited and then folds it. Daniel Negrano, king seven of clubs. You see a lot of limping in the main event, particularly oh. early on with the amateurs uh -huh. here. And even with some of the pros, as Daniel does that, Sue yeah, Doyle, one of sure. 242 women that started the main event. No relation to Doyle Brunson. <laughs> Henry Tran, who won that circuit event back in 05, A6 off and a raise to 3,500. I do remember Henry Tran. We televised that baby. We did indeed. Ai Lee with ace nine, and he'll fold to the raise from the weaker race. Now Rose, the original limper with deuces, makes the call, as does Daniel. So three players in for 3,500 each. Three hands that could be very foldable also at a lot of poker tables. <laughs> Here is the flop. King, Jack, Ace. Rose left with his deuces. Middle Check. pair for Negrano. Check. Top pair for Tran. Two checks to Tran. And then 4,100 from Henry. And Rose finally releases his deuces. But remember, Tran raised pre-flop. Daniel might put him on an Ace and Muck or Daniel might put him on a medium pair and call. I can see the hand, so I would muck. <laughs> Almost even stacks for these two pros. Call. Daniel makes the call with second pair. Two Canadians from Toronto heads up now to the turn card. Four of diamonds, no help to Daniel. 
After a check, Tran bets 6,200. That's a small bet. Daniel looks suspicious of his fellow Canadian. And Negrano kicks in his kings, and Henry Tran will take that pot. Negrano with almost 3.6 million in World Series earnings, but he's only cashed in the main event twice. As day three gets underway, we are reminded of just how difficult it is to make a deep run in the main event. Already, nearly three quarters of the field has been eliminated. Daniel Negrano is hoping this tournament will salvage an otherwise poor World Series that saw him cash in only two events. But on the other hand, Norman, there is Ben Lamb, whose place so far has the poker world buzzing. Ben Lamb. Ben Lamb. He's young, he's good looking, he's got lots of money, he just won his first bracelet. In short, he's just like me. Well, we have some similarities. <laughs> anyway, he's the chip leader to start day three, which means one thing, nothing. Hey, don't get too cocky, Ben. Day three chip leaders have rarely made the final table. There is Ben Lamb at our secondary feature table in the maroon shirt across from him, German pro Alexander Debus. He's had some success on the European Poker Tour. At this table, Debus sits in second place, way behind Lamb. Another familiar name to poker aficionados is Dan Kelly. He goes by DJK123 online and is a tournament force. Definitely a tough table out there in this 2011 main event. 26-year-old Ben Lamb presently in second place in the player of the year standings behind Phil Helmuth. He has king queen off. I forgot to mention Ben Lamb also has a girlfriend. Another thing we have in common. <laughs> Raised to 3,400. Does your wife know about that? Old habits die hard. <laughs> Dan Kelly, DJK123, with Ace Jack and the small blind. This is another guy who's just too good, too young. Kelly, 22 years old. He makes a call, and the big blind, Michael Ruby, lays it down. So it will be heads up. Kelly with his Ace Jack and King Queen for Ben Lamb. The flop is queen nine queen. Welcome to the Ben Lamb series of poker trips. Kelly checks, Lamb bets 5,000. It's been all Ben Lamb all the time. This matchup line reminds me of the Wonder Years. Dan Kelly is Kevin Arnold, and <laughs> Ben Lamb is Kevin's older brother, Wayne. All right, to the turn they go. 10 of clubs, Kelly with an up and down straight draw, but only the bottom half is live for him. Kelly checks again. Ben Lamb puts out 12,500. Tough call here for Kevin. Winnie would tell him to fold. But everyone seems to be calling Ben Lamb's bets this year, <laughs> just handing him chips. Kelly with the call. River card. Tray of diamonds, that misses Dan Kelly. And he checks a third time. Lamb will look for value here. With the three queens, 26,500 now to Kelly. Yeah, this is a much tougher game than the one at Robert F. Kennedy Junior High. <laughs> Paul Pfeiffer would tell him to fold. Can Kevin make this fold to Wayne? He does indeed. And there you see firsthand how a chip leader builds his stack, sometimes in small chunks, sometimes in larger, but almost always moving forward. Chip leader does get stronger here. To the adder tables, we find comedian Brad Garrett. He just shoved with Ace King after turning an Ace. Decision time for Zarek Megardishian, holding only Ace Queen. Not much. You don't need much. It's me with 2,900. It sounds like a used car salesman, sir. I don't fold. Come on, we can have dinner together. I, I got a hand. What, if you got a hand, bet. Come on, it's you good call. TV. You call? Yay! All right. Good luck, man. Seriously. Hands, Garrett, way ahead, but at risk. He called you. Oh. Ouch. Oh. Celebrity slow roll. <laughs> wow. Don't. <laughs> River card, another oh. ace. Garrett will double up. I love Brad Garrett, but he slow rolled that nice man. This place blows. <laughs> <laughs> In my way, Tony. Why are you clapping? I won. <laughs> Got They're clapping because they thought I was leaving. They want, they want me to leave. <laughs> I want the whole aisle clear. <laughs> we'll do it. The funny man doubles to nearly 59,000, about half the chip average, but still kicking. Here at the World Series of Poker main event, a big name does not guarantee a ticket to day three. The chance of surviving days one and two was about one and four.
Michael Mizraki won't be back at the final table. Popular rapper Nelly and Ray Romano made early exits. Is that my second play. aces in five years? Cracked. Hoop star Paul Pierce made it to day two, but could not pull off the rare NBA main event double. Well, that was a great experience. I enjoyed it, and I'll, I'll definitely be back. Being a former main event winner does not guarantee you future success. Chris Moneymaker, one of several who could not repeat history. The legendary Doyle Brunson was knocked out early. He keeps hinting he won't be back, but we're always glad to have him. And the defending world champion Canadian Jonathan Duhamel was also knocked out. Next year, I guess. The 6,865 entrants made for a prize pool of nearly $65 million. 85 countries represented at the main event. Someone will leave with the $8.7 million first prize. It won't be Duhamel, but maybe Helmuth or Joe Cata will win their second. There is Joe holding pocket sevens. He just re-raised his opponent, Thomas Hammers, who has ace king. Hammers cashed in back-to-back -back main events in 05 and 06. And Hammers moves all in. And Kata with a quick call. That all-in call there from Kata for about half his stack. Hammers doubled through Joe Kata earlier at this table. Now trying to do the same thing. No ace, no king. Kata's pocket pair still good. Turn card is a jack. Broadway draw for Hammers now. Hammers looking for an ace, king, or ten. The river card, the nine of spades. And Kata's sevens will hold up and knock out Thomas Hammers. Joe Kata, of course, youngest ever to win the main event. If he wins it again, he won't be as young. <laughs> All right, over to Jean Robert Balan on the left of your screen, who just bet 5,000 after flopping top pair. Both he and his opponent, Sarah Bilney, have the same wheel draw. Bilney was 63rd at the 05 main event. Known as Aussie Sarah, she makes the call. Turn card, King of Clubs, Blonde with a flush draw. Bilney can only hope to chop the pot now. Jean Robert checks. All in. And all in from Bilney. Bilney all in, drawing dead to a chop. Another Norman Chat School of Poker product. <laughs> 20,000 for Ballon to call. He started the hand with about 155,000. I mean, deuce for a club, I guess. Ballon worried he's up against a bigger race. And most men tend to think that women don't bluff that much. Bad laydown. Bad laydown. <laughs> Just kidding. I can still call and get a penalty, you know that. The bluff shove works, wow. And so Sarah Bilney, who now lives in England, will take that pot off a very suspicious Jean Robert Ballon. I don't think so, Bilney shows her hand. <laughs> Boy, that shuts him up. Nothing, <laughs> just <laughs> on. Jean Robert's still wow. stunned. Oh, baby. <laughs> is Bobby Blanc sitting here or there? <laughs> Dude, she literally had no outs. <laughs> she had no outs. She had what? Uh, no. Zero, 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 zero outs. Yeah. It's a club. The three. Yeah. The three of clubs. Oh. The three of clubs is all. She had no outs. <laughs> put your last, put your last uh, money in with the... Uh, I love it. Nicely she done. She put the Jean Robert on Jean Robert. So Bill Ney will stick around at that table to torture Jean Robert some more. Let's get back to our feature table. 1,830 players remaining in the main event. On the button, Andy Rose folds nine tray over to Dale Robinson in the small blind with pocket fives. A 44-year-old insurance agent from Indiana. He raises to 4,000 two and a half times the big blind and the big blind, Daniel Negrano, king queen of clubs. First step is call. It'll be blind versus blind. Cool. You know, Lon, one of my campaigns this year is to add a third blind. Small blind, big blind, it's super up. blind. It will create more action. Wow, I love that. All right, here's the flop. Heads up. Trey, ace, deuce. Pocket pair. Still good for Robinson. He adds a wheel draw. Reaches for chips immediately. Yeah, Bets 4,500. Or even two small blinds and one big blind. Let's get three people with chips committed to the pot before the hand starts and let the fun begin. <laughs> Daniel behind with his king-queen suited. He makes the call. Oh. Daniel might think his king is good, or he's planning to take the pot away later from the amateur. Turn card, 10 of hearts. Robinson's still good with the pocket fives. He checks. Now to Negreanu, who picked up a gut shot Broadway draw. Well, Robinson's check there pretty much tells Daniel he doesn't have an ace. Daniel checks behind. River card. Queen pairs Negreanu. Ceylon, this hand would have been a lot more fun and intriguing 
if there was a super blind in it for three-way action. Robinson perhaps thinking he can't win a showdown. Bet 6,500. Hmm. Daniel looks perplexed. That was almost a really good card for me. Daniel would have preferred seeing a jack to hit Broadway. Well, this day has not been going well for Daniel, and of course he's trying to figure out a man he's likely never seen before. I would fold, but of course I would be wrong. Negranu trying to work this one out, makes the call. How big? <laughs> not big enough. Daniel's queens will take the pot. Good call. I call that time the big blind only because he had fives. Remember, I keep saying I keep folding that in the big blind. <laughs> position I had. Well, one of our features this year is to hear in-depth analysis from the pros on certain hands. Here's Andy Block on what we just saw. In this hand, we see a little skirmish between the two blinds. Robinson opens up with pocket fives, and Daniel calls out of the big blind with king-queen suited. Robinson fires off a continuation bet, and Daniel thinks his king high might be the best hand since it's just blind versus blind. He gets a free card on the turn and hits a queen on the river. In this spot, though, Robinson makes a mistake here. He's got a bluff, but he's got to bet bigger as a bluff. He bets too small, and Daniel has an easy call with his pair of queens. Bet sizing is one of the most important components of No Limit Hold'em, and actually, Lon, so is shirt sizing. <laughs> <laughs> ben Lamb, the chip leader in the room right now. He finished 14th in the main event two years ago, earning over $633,000. See, if I'm Ben Lamb here, I go with one size larger. <laughs> ben chooses to bet one or two or three sizes larger. With King Nine of Diamonds, he does raise the 3500 over to Debus, the second biggest stack at this table, 10-9 of hearts. He calls. So, so are you with me on small blind, big blind, super blind? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Blind? I'm there. Awesome. I will uh, be your biggest endorser. Yeah, it changes all the math. And let's say you want to race from the cutoff. Now you got to worry about the button and three other players behind you. It's just fascinating. <laughs> the two blinds fold, so it will be heads up. DeBoost dominated by Ben Lamb. The two biggest stacks, heads up here. Nine, ten, deuce. Just a pair of nines for Lamb. He checks two pair for DeBoost. Zabus, born in Germany, but now lives in Austria. Chips in hand, 6,500. Zabus likes top two. And Ben probably doesn't mind middle pair with a big kicker. And he does make that call. Turn card now. Zabus way ahead. Tray of diamonds. Lamb gets no improvement. Checks again. So the tray of diamonds never changes anything on the turn. It's a stupid card. <laughs> DeBoos with the two pair. That's 11,500. Ben Lamb usually likes to be the big stack bully, but he's wary here of DeBoos's hand. That bet was almost half the pot. That Lamb grudgingly puts the chips in with second pair. River card. Jack of hearts was no help to Ben Lamb, and he checks a third time. DeBoost looks very comfortable over there with his two pair. And that's a healthy bet, 33,500. At this point, Ben can only beat a bluff. And he did not get to be chip leader by making bad calls. He does lay it down, and DeBoost will take that pot. So some of Lamb's well-earned chips head over to DeBoost. Ben's got plenty more behind, though. He is still the top dog here on day three of the main event. Back at the main event, it was day 1C when Phil Helmuth made his entrance. Da-da-da, da-da-da. Phil Helmuth reporting live from the World Series of Poker. I'm about to sit down at my table. Hopefully some great things will happen. I've had a great World Series of Poker, they tell me. I don't like second places, and I've had three of those. But here we are, the World Series of Poker, the big one, the main event. I'm completely ready, more ready than I've ever been in my entire life. Wish me luck. The poker brat's optimism quickly gave way to his usual antics. Frustrated by his inability to get anything going, Helmuth bled chips and was on the verge of elimination. He did manage to survive day one, but he had under 12,000 chips. 
Then on day 2A, Helmuth did not realize he was playing on that day. Meanwhile, his short stack was blinding off. Well, I was sleeping in bed. My phone's ringing, and I'm like, oh, God. No one's called me in a month and a half to wake me up. And then someone knocks on my door, and my door opens. It's security. I'm like, what are you doing in my room? They're like, you're playing today at the World Series of Poker. Call your wife. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm anteing off my chips. I, don't, I only have 11 eight. It's horrible. You would think if you're the all-time leader in World Series bracelets, final tables, and caches, you would know what day you were playing in the main event. You would think. <laughs> Out in the field, Phil just flopped Broadway, and he check calls all in. On his left, Terrence Valenzuela has aces up and a slim chance to knock off the brat. Turn card is a seven, no help to Valenzuela. Valenzuela needs an ace or a 10 to bust Phil Helmuth. The river card. It's a four. Yes. First hand you ever won. Let me be excited one time, please. Come on, man. Helmuth doubles up. Blame me for being excited. Pulled the jack signature. He was blinded down to under 7,000 chips on day two, now up to 65,000, about half the chip average, but pretty impressive. You know, I always lose my sunglasses, too. It's the first time at all in, like, three days. As Phil told us, he has had a spectacular World Series thus far. Three second-place finishes, including one at the 50K Poker Players Championship. That finish put him ahead of Ben Lamb, who had been leading the Player of the Year race for most of the series. Ben Lamb, seated at the secondary feature table, has been leading the way for most of the main event. He continues to be top dog with over 548,000 chips. What a story he was writing this year at the World Series. Out into the field right now, and we catch up with Max Tricoli at one of the outer tables in the black shirt with Pocket Kings. Just raised a 7,400 preflop, jousting with Tuan Vo, who is challenging Lamb for the biggest stack in the room. Vo in the white shirt and hat, call the 7-5 of diamonds. There's the flop, Jack 6-4. Pocket Kings are still good for Tricoli. He checks. Vo open-ended, bets 13-5. And a call from Tricoli. Tricoli, a 40-year-old amateur. 13-5, he said, right? He's from Lomita, California. Oh, sorry. Boy, Joe Navarro would have a field day with Max Tricoli. <laughs> All right, turn card. Queen of clubs, third club on board. Check. Tricoli checks his kings again. Vo, a 37-year-old pro. That's 27,000. Vo virtually motionless, and Tricoli makes me nervous. <laughs> He's three chapters in the Book of Tales. And he throws in a call. Now the river card. Tricoli way ahead with the Kings, and they are the best hand after the Ten of Diamonds falls. Tricoli checks again. And Vo will bluff at it again. 35,000. <laughs> Boy, Tricoli really stewing now. People call Vo Tornado because his chips go up and down very fast. He's fired three barrels here into Nervous Nelly. Vo looking like a very cool customer right now. What do you got? Got a flush? I have a huge hand, dude. Not a huge hand. If I fold you, show him. Promise. If Vo shows the bluff, we're going to need a medic to table 357. <laughs> Can I call time on myself? I mean, yeah, call clock on myself. <laughs> I want to fold this so bad. Yeah, that is allowed. Am I I'm not allowed to show my hand right now? No. 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 Not lagging. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. I, I want to call on myself because I really want to fold this. Yeah. Vo looks casual and comfortable. I'd fold it. I'm in more pain right now, Lon, than he is. <laughs> I fold. Tricoli lays down the Kings. <laughs> but will show. Oh, <laughs> Tricoli nice. was had. Nice play. Seven high. Yep, seven high. Hit by a tornado. They say the main event is a minefield through which the pros must tiptoe, but the amateurs have it much tougher. Back to the featured table, Richard Kirsch with pocket fives raised the action to 4,000. Henry Tran has the action with Ace King. He re-raises to 11,800. Tran, a computer chip design engineer. He beat Eric Lindgren heads up for that circuit ring in 05. Thomas Coral, the chip leader at this table, folds. Kirsch 
makes the call, and he'll go heads up against Tran. The flop is King. King Dews, a pretty good flop for Ace King and Henry Tran. And he checks. No, I didn't check. You went like this. No, no, no. You got to be careful. You went like this with your chips. This is actually a tap. It was a check. Tran tapped the table with his chips three times. Kirsch checks his small pocket pair. Turn card seven, no help to Kirsch. I don't think there'd be any checking here. Yeah, 10,000 from Tran. And a quick call from Kirsch. River card six of clubs. The trip kings are best for Henry Tran. 40,000. 40,000. Big bet. Well, he missed a bet line on the flop, so he's making up for it now. And, and Tran's frustration that it was called a check on the flop should clue Kirsch in that Tran might have a big hand. This would be for more than half of Kirsch's remaining stack. Pocket fives with the kings on board. I call. Kirsch calls. Ace king. I told you. Oops. And Henry Tran gets paid off. And Kirsch wants that one back. Yeah, nice pot for Tran right there. Despite the misstep, he still ends up with the chips. He has had a good start to day three. This is the man who won the first ever World Series circuit event back in 05, now trying to take down the main event. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Daniel Negreanu holding court right now at our feature table. Some of the big names in the poker world still left in this main event. Patrick Antonius with 339,000. Last year's runner-up, John Reisner is still alive. Chris Bjorn and John Turner with some work to do out in the field. Return to action here at the featured table. 1,765 players remaining. Ben Lamb still the chip leader in the room. Action here begins on Daniel Negreanu. Ace Queen of Diamonds on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Hole Cam. Negreanu came into this World Series with high expectations, but playing more than 30 events, he only cashed twice. Daniel with a raise to 3,600. Tran with Jack 10 of Diamonds. A look between the two of them. They need the King of Diamonds. Chase Ooh, Berger's raise. favorite card for a straight flush. <laughs> for the win. A re-raise from Tran to 8,500. Henry Tran is aggressive. And in uh, Richard Kirsch's defense in that last hand we saw, it's tough to put him on a hand. Yeah, it does seem like when Tran plays, he does raise. And he has done that here. Action right now on Robinson in the big blind. 10 deuce. And he mucks. Now the raise back to Negrano, who makes the call for 4,900 more. Canadian mano a mano again. Tran has Daniel covered right now. The flop queen, 6-5. Daniel with a pair of queens, and he checks. Tran missed that flop, and looks like he's going to bet. We'll see when he flopped trip kings, he wanted to fire, and here he will fire with absolutely nothing. 9,500. Daniel with top pair, top kicker. Just a call. Oh, and Tran gives Daniel an Ushka Ushka look. <laughs> Ace of clubs hits Negrano. He's got aces up now, but a third club on board, and he checks. Henry checks his Broadway draw. Good check there from Henry Tran. River card, 10 of spades, pairs Tran, but it's useless to him. Top two are good for Daniel. Daniel probably expected Tran to fire again on the turn. He'll have to do his own bidding now. 24,200. Okay, you win. I just have uh, Queen Jack, so it's tough to... Tran yeah, folds. Queen Jack, you got really lucky. Huh? You had Queen Jack, you got really lucky on the turn. I didn't do lucky. You got, you got lucky on the turn. Someone show one card? What's the difference? I'm telling you, you got lucky on the turn. Uh, if you had Queen Jack, you, you got... You lucky on no, the turn. No, you're lucky on the you turn. See, if it was in club, you're in big trouble, sir. No, I'm not in big trouble. I got you. What you got? The whole time. I have Ace of Diamond, Queen of Diamond. Top two pair. Top two pair. Yeah. What do you got? Queen Jack? I no. Have... You re-raised me with Queen Jack? Uh, you... He re-raised you with worse. <laughs> Tran loses chips, but still up on the day. There's the trademark Negranu smile. That will always be around, but will his kid poker nickname? Well, you know, I thought about it, and... Kid Rock is what, like 55 years old and he's still Kid Rock? So I feel like it's more a sense of like how old I feel and I feel like a kid. Daniel Negreanu should be Kid Poker as long as he keeps acting like a kid. He still has some like 12 year old qualities, so that's okay. He'll be Father Poker pretty soon. Daniel Negreanu will be Kid Poker when he's Doyle's age. I think it's about time he came ex-Kid Poker. <laughs> First time I heard it, I assumed they were being facetious. I don't think you're allowed to be Kid Poker when you're 50. 
to change your nickname in the middle of a sport is not something that's gonna fly, I don't think. I think you should be Kid Poker forever. So I can always be Kid Poker, but if I ever switch it, I'm playing with Dan the Man, you know? But I don't really like Dan, so that wouldn't work. He's 36. I think Kid Poker is midlife crisis poker now, but it just doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> At an outer table, Negranu's friend and two-time bracelet winner, Jen Harmon, is smiling despite being all in with pocket eights against the two kings of former French boxer, Yoan Zawi. The flop is 6-4-5, a gut shot for Jennifer. Jennifer triples her outs. Turn card, tray of diamonds. And a deuce would chop the pot now. River card is an ace, a blank for Jen Harmon. She has been knocked out by the former French fighter. We always show Jen Harmon getting knocked out just once. I'd like to show her getting to the final table. Her vanquisher, Zowie, is a regular at the Aviation Club in Paris and so far enjoying his first ever main event here in Las Vegas. Over to our secondary table where the tournament chip leader sits in seat one just to the left of the dealer, Ben Lamb with 541,000 chips. Lamb has had that many chips in front of him for the entire World Series. <laughs> it seems that way, doesn't it? <laughs> Action on Ian Costello in the white hat with pocket kings. 33-year-old pro. He cashed at an earlier no-limit event here at this World Series. Splits his time between living in Vegas and Northern California's coastal town of Pacifica. A raise to 3,800. Lamb gets out of the way. Folded to Marvin Peltola with aces. He's a 47-year-old concrete contractor from the state of Washington. See, if he had his sunglasses on before the hand began, Lon, he wouldn't have noticed the pocket aces. <laughs> Well, this hand is a bad beat story waiting to happen. You wouldn't believe it, I ran kings into aces. Or you can't believe it, I got my aces cracked by kings. <laughs> you got it right one way or another. A re-raise to 8,400 with the aces. And that should clear out the... Uh, uh, the shoe clerks and crumb bumps. Uh, right. Costello with the kings, raises Peltola all in. And, of course, a snap call from Peltola. And he's in good shape to double up. The sunglasses are back off. And Costello looks like he wouldn't mind being blindfolded now. All right, here we go to the flop. Aces versus Kings. 10-9 deuce, no paint. Good news for Peltola's aces. Aces are still better than Kings, Lon. I'll keep you up to date. Thank you very much. Turn card now. <laughs> Tray of clubs. He must have got a king on the river. With the Bucky. aces still beating the Kings. Costello needs a king. River card is a seven, and the aces hold up. Peltola doubles to over 74,000. Well played. I don't know about that. I just got lucky. Every player's dream, every player's nightmare. Aces versus Kings. I call. Is that right? Well played. I don't know about that. I just got lucky. Welcome back to day three of the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. The main event plays no favorites. Past champs get no free passes. There you get a look at the champion's banners that hang just outside the poker arena. Doyle Brunson went out on day one. Last year's champion, Jonathan Duhamel, we saw busted on day two. But seven world champs are still left, including the 2002 winner, Robert Varconi. Varconi playing in the outer tables right now in a big pot with Marvin Rettenmeyer. Varconi flopped a straight, but can only hope to chop this pot at best because Rettenmeyer flopped a bigger straight. The likable New Yorker in a treacherous spot right here. He could be the next main event champion casualty. Farconi flops the straight, but Rettenmeyer with the only hand that beats him right now, the higher straight. Rettenmeyer just re-raised to 45,000 with his queen eye straight. Out of Arconi with a jack eye straight. I'm all in. He re-raises all in and gets a quick call from the German pro. Varconi all in and about to be all out. And you see Robert's wife, Olga, in the background coming in to hear the distressing news. Her man has one foot and two hands out the door. And now the turn card. And there's a queen! The only card that could bail Robert Varconi out. This guy gets lucky every nine years. <laughs> and he does survive and chop that pot with Marvin Rettenmeyer. Back to our secondary featured table. Chip leader Ben Lamb sits here. Action will begin on Ian Costello in the white hat on the right. And he's got the Jack Link's Beef Jerky wild card hand. Take your shot, Norman. Main event wild card hands are the toughest in the business, Lon. <laughs> Looks like he's raising from under the gun. It smells like A or B. 
He raises the 3,700 to Carlos Boyd with pocket aces. Oh, whatever he has, Costello is up against pocket aces again. I've always taught my Norman Chad School of Poker students not to play against pocket aces. <laughs> Boyd with a re-raise to 8,500. He owns a security business in Panama, and the two early raises have quite an effect on the rest of the table. Now back to Costello. He makes a call for 4,800 more. Costello's calling here. Definitely pocket tens or ace jack suited. Two short stacks going at it. Boyd with a slight chip advantage. The flop is 6-10 ace. Boyd flops a set of aces, and they both check. Turn card tray of diamonds. No threat to the set of aces. Costello checks again. Boyd bets it. 10,000. I can't believe Costello would check a set of tens twice. He's getting low stacked. Don't know how he can continue here without a set of 10s or a pair of aces. He makes the call for 10,000. I still think it's gotta be A or B. All right, river card, jack of diamonds. Costello moves all in. A snap call from Boyd. Oh, Costello had the 10s. Boy, that was ugly. Costello with huge hands, runs into pocket aces twice and has run out of here. I think that's a win for me though, Lon. I kind of had him on pocket 10s. But Costello loses the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand and is eliminated from the 2011 main event. Those are back to back, right? Yeah. And Norman, for your wild card record, I'm giving you half credit. I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back over to our feature table. Daniel Negrano trying to get something going. His stack about even today. Ty Lee with 6-5 off on the Jack Link's beef jerky. Hole cam, he folds. I'm still feeling Ian Costello's pain. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Now Richard Kirsch moves all in with ace-queen off suit for 15,600. Doral Brunson says never commit your chips with ace-queen. So far, he's in luck. A number of folds behind him. How much is it? Now over to Brian Dennis with oh. pocket aces. He does make the call. It's a pocket aces fire sale here. Hitting. All right, so heads up and Kirsch sees he's in a world of hurt. The 27 year old trying to knock out the 38 year old. Kirsch at risk. The flop is Trey eight, king two diamonds. Kirsch needs immediate help on the turn now. And a diamond. Yeah, that'd be a good one for you. That's a pretty bleak flop for Kirsch. Not so good for me. Huh? I don't want to see it. No, I don't want to Turn card, deuce of spades, and that will do it. Richard Kirsch drawing dead, eliminated from the main event by Brian Dennis. Texas Dolly speaks the truth about Ace Queen. An ace on the river just for good measure means a set of aces wins it for Brian Thanks. Dennis. Boy, when aces do their job, especially at the main event, there's no better feel. Accomplished poker pro Sam Stein finally captured his first ever gold bracelet as he took down the $3,000 pot limit Omaha event, defeating Ben Lamb heads up for 420 grand. But Lamb would get his victory in a bigger PLO event, the $10,000 championship. And in the process, he reinvented the Lambeau Leap. He beat Finnish pro Sammy Calipero to win his first bracelet and become a serious player of the year contender. Ben Lamb made three final tables at this year's World Series, and along with Phil Helmuth, certainly is one of the hottest poker players still left in the main event. Every year, somebody is blessed, and right now, Ben Lamb is blessed, playing good and running good. And still the chip leader on day three of the main event. 1996 main event champion Huckleberry Seed has joined the table. I'd like to be Huck Seed for a day, but I don't know if he'd like to be me for a day. <laughs> Maybe if he didn't have to switch well, with you. Like King Kevin. Queen of Clubs for Michael Ruby. Ruby from Greer, South Carolina. I've never been to Greer Lawn, but I know for a fact that it is the home of the only BMW manufacturing facility in North America. And they've got a great test track as well. He raises to 3,500. Ben Lamb from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've never been to Tulsa either, Lon, and I know nothing about it. <laughs> Good barbecue. He calls to Carlos Boyd with pocket trays. Boyd lives in Panama City, which I believe is in Panama. But there's one in Florida as well, and he calls. I've never been to Florida. <laughs> Alexander DeBoos now with pocket tens and the small blind. DeBoos was born in Heidelberg, Germany, home of the Heidelberg Castle. I thought about getting married there once. Good beer there as well. He makes the call for 2,700 more. Big blind folds, and so four players will see this flop. Five, four, seven, rainbow. DeBoos has the best hand still with the tens, and he checks. Ruby missed, he checks. Lamb with a gut shot, and he has chips. He bets 8,000. Yeah, the big stack is speculating here. Boyd with the pocket trays and a gut shot that's no good. 
One last look, and then he mucks. Now DeBoos with the best hand, the pocket tens, makes the call. DeBoos playing cautiously, out of position against Lamb's big stack. Ruby lays down his king-queen, so heads up to Boos and Lamb once again. He's beat me every pot, Huck. It won't quit. Yeah. You had a lot more chips, huh? Turn card is a six, and there you go, Lamb with the straight. Have we mentioned that Ben Lamb is running good? <laughs> no kidding. I'll have whatever he's having. The boost checks again. Now can Lamb get the boost to bite? That's 13,000. The boost still with the over pair to the board. The boost does fold like you got me. Good fold, and Lamb doing the only thing he knows how to do, stacking chips. Increasing his chip lead out in the field. Two-time bracelet winner Freddie Deeb is all in with pocket kings, called by Kevin Isofano, who flopped a pair of jacks. Deeb on the left. Stunt counting, buddy. 21, 22, 3. <laughs> the river card a queen, and Freddie will double up to almost 105,000. Freddie Deeb doubling up and greeting customers. Life is good. All right, from the outer tables back to the secondary table. Action folded to Marvin Peltola. He just won a big pot with aces, now with seven, six off. He raises. I feel like making any silly side bets. Like what? Make what? 9,000 out of 15,000 three-pointers. Kings for DeBoos. I have to shoot 15,000 three-pointers during the World Series oh. and make nine. That sounds like a terrible bet. For who? DeBoos repops it. I'm just trying to make a bet to stay in shape for the World Series because I didn't work out enough this year. So I just have to do that, and what do you have to do? Huck and Ben getting some other business done, and then Peltola with a re-raise at 24-6. It'll be like a do-don't thing. Peltola with squad douche, but figuring DeBoos probably three-bet me because he thinks I raised light on the button, so he might have nothing. So I'll four-bet him, and he'll run for cover. Nice theory, except DeBoos has pocket, pocket kings. kings and he gets serious now as he re-raises peltola all in i'd call that a legitimate five bet and peltola's splashathon is over the seven six ends up where they belonged a couple of minutes ago and deboos will take that pot he's got over a million bucks in online earnings now with over two hundred thousand chips here on day three of the main event it's still early plenty of time to build a monster stack or you could lose it all in the next hand because this is the main event Back in the main event field, Phil Hellmuth still alive on day three despite sleeping through part of day two and falling below 10,000 chips. He just saw a flop with Eric Jackson. Jackson with a wheel draw. Phil leads with a pair of fours. They both check to the turn. Not sure why Phil checked there. Pot control, maybe? Another deuce on the turn. Jackson checks in the plaid shirt. Phil bets 6,000 and gets a call. Seven of hearts. Hellmuth's pair of fours is best. Another check from Jackson. Phil checks and shows his fours. Jackson says that's good. Phil wins the pot, but still down for the day. It's nice to spend a quiet moment with Phil Helmuth stacking chips. He could use another pair of sunglasses, though. Elsewhere, another top pro is all in. Jason Mercier in the yellow behind Russian pro Andrei Zychenko, who leads with a pair of eights, but now Mercier turns a flush. Well, Jason in good position to double up, but the river with a third deuce, and Zychenko's full house sends Mercier to the exits. So that's how you beat Jason Mercier. Mercier, a terrific player who's been running good for about three years now. Right there, he runs bad. Mercier just won his second bracelet this year. Yeah, a lot of people say, I want to run like Jason Mercier, but uh, that idiom just got a bit tarnished with that beat. <laughs> All right, back to the secondary table where Jason's friend Ben Lamb is the one running good. He remains the top stack in the room. A lot of the poker world starting to say, I want to run like Bemba, which is Ben Lamb's nickname. Lamb with Queen 10 off, a raise to 3,500. Ben Lamb and Jason Mercy are good friends, and each of them enjoying extraordinary runs. The boost lays it down. So now Andrew Broussard in the small blind with pocket fours. Broussard, a 27-year-old Las Vegas pro. He's cashed three times in this World Series. He calls for 2,700. Kelly gives up his big blind. So Lamb and Broussard heads up. Broussard with a pocket pair. Here's the flop now. Trey eight Trey. Broussard still ahead with two pair now. He checks. Lamb bets 5,000. Lamb bets with nothing. And that's a pretty good flop for pocket fours. And Broussard does come along. He's got the lead. Turn card now. 
Another eight. Broussard still best. One of the upsides to being chip leader is people play cautiously against you because they don't want to bust. They both check to the river. And there's a 10. And look who's running like Bemba. Bemba <laughs> himself. Wow. And Broussard checks. It's better to be lucky than to be good. And in Ben Lamb's case, he's been both most of this World Series. Lamb with 10s and 8s. That's 18,000. Broussard with just 8s and 4s. It's a very touchy feeling that Broussard's right. got to be worried about the flush, too. Remember, Lamb fired on the flop. A call. And guess who wins? Ben Lamb takes more chips from his table mates. It's good to be Ben Lamb. So Lamb adds to his leading chip stack as he continues to come into his own at this World Series. <laughs> yes! Dude, she literally had no outs. She had no outs. Day three's appetizer was chips, and Ben Lamb continues to eat them up. He's over 600,000 with no end in sight. First step. Oh. Kid Poker's still around, and so is his nickname. He had fives. <laughs> Remember the position I had. Day three is just beginning. For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Lon McCarran. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.